Hi, I'm Brad Skiles. I'm in the USA and thousands of miles away are two of my friends. So I have Nasser in Pakistan and it's uh, almost 530. It's uh, 820 in the morning, my time. It's about 520 his time in the evening. And then my other friend Sunday in Nigeria. And Sunday, what time is it in Nigeria? We are nine minutes after one. Okay, after one o'clock. Well, we're here today because we're going to talk about fear, which is, um, I guess I could say rampant maybe this time of the year, but we want to talk about fear and we're going to talk about praying impossible prayers. And this all came together with uh, what's happening in Florida. So Florida is uh, less than two days away from maybe a storm uh, hitting inland. And there's a pretty dramatic graphic of the trail where the storm's going. So we're going to pray in the end that God um, somehow turns that into a prop tropical storm or a very low grade hurricane. And we don't want to just pray for safety and protection. We actually want to pray for what we uh, think is in our hearts to see God do with that storm. It'd be a miracle, but I think we've seen miracles. So that's what we're going to talk about as well. So guys, I'm going to give you my example of fear, which I think pales probably in comparison <laughs> to whatever you guys experienced. But I, I think it would be helpful for us to put fear in context. So in, it was 1996, it could have been 97, but I was just a couple hundred yards from being home, driving my car, and I began to lose the vision in my right eye. And I knew, I mean, I knew something was weird and I knew I couldn't see out of my eye. And I began to sense my whole body changing. I began to feel fear in a way that was unusual to me. And maybe it was a God thing, but just 30 feet from my house is a stoplight. <clears throat> so I stopped at the stoplight. And I, I mean, I knew I had to do something. I, I wasn't going to go home. So I passed my house, went to stoplight. It was red. I stopped. And, and I just said, God, if, if, if I'm going to lose my sight, that's okay. So do whatever you want to do. I don't care. And when I did that, I could sense um, what I would just say is peace. <laughs> I mean, it was so easy for me to tell the difference between my body being in a state of fear and turning it over to, to God to do whatever he wanted to do and having my body just be at peace. And uh, just if anyone's wondering, <laughs> I ended up with a sports accident that tore both retinas and uh, they got fixed. But uh, that, you know, I didn't know what was going on. OK, so Nasser, how about tell us one of your fear stories? Uh, well, uh, I've been... Uh... Many times that I was in fear and yeah. lots of circumstances that I have faced in my life. Uh, but recent one uh, was last year. Uh, most of our prayer page, uh, uh, prayer group members, they know about this incident. So that was one of my uh, biggest fear and uh, biggest uh, uh, thing that uh, that I never have expected in my life that this could be happen. So uh, I was put in prison. Uh, there was no, I didn't do anything. I was just went to save my. Sister-in-law and help my brother here in a Muslim house. Uh, she, she used to cook their uh, food and uh, used to clean their house. So it was a false allegation on her that she, uh, uh, some of the gold things uh, she has taken. Uh, but when they put us in uh, her investigation and she was afraid and she was uh, just whatever, what was saying, whatever was coming in her mind. So in that case, I was also arrested. So when they, fully investigated and they used, uh, they beat us and uh, they, uh, I've, I've been there for more than a week uh, in prison. So uh, I think uh, 
what i uh, felt and what i uh, experienced in uh, at that time that god put us in troubles uh, to make us uh, shine better to to be more close with god so that was the time that when there was no social media no mobiles no no internet no computers nothing was there so it it, it brought me closer to god uh, it was uh, my time when i i can have more and more time with god with only god so uh, in a very silent uh, place i can say so although there were lots of people but uh, no nobody was uh, used to disturb anyone so i had uh, a quiet time with my god so uh, uh, most of my time used to be with god in praying and to be uh, very close with god so that that was my one of the biggest fear uh, uh, because i i just thought that it will be for one day or maybe for a couple of hours but it went for a longer time so but i think the that opportunity was for me to to be with to be close with god to pray and to reflect on my life so uh, but I, uh, that fear actually put a bad impressions also on my mind uh, which took time and uh, sometime again i whenever i uh, feel that moment and uh, i still feel fear but when i pray then uh, everything just go uh, vanish and uh, i feel happy uh, that god put me uh, for my learning in that prison so yes Okay, so I'm going to retell that a little bit. We had an internet disruption, and I'll just say it really fast. But what, what you were describing was a year ago in October, you were abducted. Yes. That's what, what I say. And your brother-in-law and sister-in-law were as well. So the three of you were abducted by the Pakistani secret police, taken to a prison. You were all three of you were accused of a crime that they later decided did not happen. But there was four days where you were with your brother-in-law and other people in a cell, but you didn't know anything about what was happening and nobody knew anything about where you were. So when you said there was no internet, et cetera, that was because they took your phone, you had nothing and you had, you know, yes. more, it, it, it went on a week before you got out. And it was a miracle that all three of you yes. got out. We, we didn't expect that, but yes. we had massive prayer. We had false reports that you were kidnapped and that there was a ransom and all kinds of bad stuff was going on. But was there a time when you were feeling this fear and then it was like a light switch and then you felt peace? What, was it that dramatic or how did that change for you? Yeah, it does actually. Uh, uh, when it uh, uh nobody would, uh, was coming uh, that nobody was able to find us so i actually i thought that uh, uh, my relatives my friends and uh, they will find me but nobody was coming so th then my fears uh, i started fear and but uh, then rather than putting my trust on coming my relatives or friends to see me i put my trust on god so I started mm -hmm. praying and uh, God showed me that it will be raining. Well, you will be released. So exactly it rains. Glory to God. That uh, God is so good. That God showed me a sign that it will be raining uh, when you will be released. So actually uh, when rain started, I thought, yeah, it, it was about uh, 1 a.m. at night around about. So uh, when uh, when the rain started, uh, after a few uh, minutes, the rain got stopped and uh, I was still in uh, prison. So I started praying that God, you showed me a, a sign that it will be raining and you will be uh, free, but I'm still here. And after a few minutes, I was called uh, uh, my name and uh, the police officer said, uh, okay, bring your uh, 
uh, wear your shoes also. I I I was afraid actually. I see. I said I uh, maybe they are going to beat me again. Uh, so, but uh, when he said okay, uh, I said why? Uh, he said don't you want to go to home? I said yeah, I want to go to home. Why not? So he said okay, bring your uh, luggage and what your shoes, whatever you have. So you are going home. So uh, that. All right, and and really, uh, we'll move on. But there are people who've well, been in that, that same. I was praising God. Okay, there there are people in that same situation that nobody has ever found where they were. <laughs> right, so it was a God thing that in four days your family found out where you were, and then it was a God thing that you were released as well as your sister in law. So yes. women have a very yes. negative uh, kind of status in Pakistan. She was accused of a crime and her husband and you got also accused of it. All false. Yes. But the fact that yes. all three of you walked out together was, was really something that we didn't think would happen other than we were praying that that would happen and that happened. All right. So yes. Sunday, tell us a story from you, Sunday. What, where, where have you faced fear in your life? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, actually, I would like to start by saying this. What I understand about fear, I see fear as one of the instruments, a, str a strong instrument that they will use to attack our minds before it struck us with its own plan. So, they will possibly introduce fear to us because he knew that if we accommodate that fear in us, we will be able to achieve whatever we want to achieve in our life. So, though I went through a lot of things that can, that brought a fear to my life, but uh, there is one that I can never forget, and is the one I see as the strongest one. And that uh, that one is what happened this year to one of my uh, member in Sigan Prayer House. So uh, it happens to it happened that. Uh, the wife of that person and my own wife got uh, pregnant and we were praying for the two of them to be strong and to have safe delivery. And the wife of that person, I mean my member, she is also my member, I mean the wife. I don't want to mention her name because of our security system. So uh, it happened that when they deliver the thing, she, she struggled to deliver. And why, when she got delivered, the baby was not strong enough and oxygen was planted. For the uh, for the baby to survive, we try all our possible best with prayer. We did our own possible best, even though not only in Nigeria, people outside Nigeria also uh, forgot to revive that son. But uh, at the last, we realized that. We lost the babies. That <laughs> that gave me a serious uh, concern because my fear was that okay, we pray, forgot to uh, bring this baby back to life, and also this baby. Uh, was the I mean the first child we will have since we started our ministry. 
So, must God uh, answer us in a new way that we did not expect? So, when did we when we lost the baby, I was like, hey. and my own wife also is also pregnant. And the day of delivery is approaching. So that gave me a serious fear that, oh, did you know that the devil is trying to attack us to this day by taking our baby? We are taking one, and my own baby is also coming. So, what, we, what is going to happen? So, I was scaring about, about that. But uh, this passage that I mentioned, that is Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, that says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be frightened, for I am your God. So I see God. Uh, I mean, that uh, Bible passage, give me a strong heart that no what happened to them God know the reason because God is always with us and I was broken the family of the baby the, the one who gave birth to the baby all of us were broken because but glory be to God after this uh, Bible passage, and with the help of others, uh, that is why I cherish so much to have a the new Christian study. Because if you have Christian beside you, not ordinary brother, uh, seriously, God will really use them. Because God really, really used people beside me, like uh, Mr. Brad and others in the group, in the prayer group. Because God really used them to encourage and also to guide me in order to encourage the uh, the wife and the husband that uh, gave birth to that baby. So. So, uh, none of them know exactly what I'm uh, going through then. But even though when I want to name my baby, I need to say, say that in the baby, uh, baby ceremony. I mean, name ceremony. I need to say that. And I was weeping. Or everyone was weeping on that day. Because that incident really touched my heart. And glory be to God, with his word and with the help of uh, his people beside me, God took away the fear. And that incident now happened to be one of the strongest experiences that I ever had. And that incident gave me strong heart now. Because literally, if someone tells me that the wound will be healed by now, I may doubt it because I never cry of such the way I did when the incident happened. And what uh, during the incident when we want to bury the baby, you know, I'm a type. I never done anything like that before. We bury a baby of it, and I was called that they are waiting for me to come and bury the baby. I was like, ah, huh? this is going to be the first thing that I will do. Not a living ceremony, not joining, but to bury the babies in this church. That thing really gave me a serious uh, fear. But glory be to God today. Uh, that uh, experience really helped me and it built up my faith. And it also helped me to 
understand God in every circumstance. That God really with us. Because in his word, he said, I am with you always. So I I can say that that experience may not be good to us. But I see good in that uh, experience because God used it to build up my faith more than before. I think uh, maybe I should stop here. Okay. So I think we got your heart. I'm going to just repeat a little bit of it in case if someone had a problem hearing it. Um, but you you have a church called the Prayer House. It just yes. finished its first anniversary. So September to September was the first anniversary. And in a church of about eight people, maybe a little bit more, um, your wife and another person, uh, another couple was pregnant, went through this situation at the same time. The other couple gave birth first and their baby son, which was the first baby born in your church, um, didn't live three, three days. And that, uh, you know, our hearts just go out to that story. But what also makes it difficult is that just a few weeks later, your wife gave birth to a very healthy um, second daughter. And so, you know, I can't imagine um, what was going on in this little church to have one baby die and the other baby be healthy. And that, of course, is something they can't teach you in seminary, something that um, only the Holy Spirit can, can walk through with you. And um, so that, you know, a deeply emotional situation, maybe just to put everything in context as well. Um, you and your wife spent three nights in prayer with the other couple for a total of about eight hours. And uh, God really did some great heart surgery uh, for both of you. I mean, all of you, all, all both couples and, um, you know, nobody's ever the same. But uh, God really produced good fruit from all of that, even though that was a terrible tragedy. So um, anything else you would want to add to that? Uh, actually, in the process of, uh, you okay, do you want me to say anything aside uh, this issue? Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear the question. Yep. I mean, do you want me to say anything to, I mean, to this uh, incident, the baby or another experience? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, another experience that I had is when I was minary. So, can suddenly be scoopy. There was a time when uh, 2020, precisely, the time of uh, coronavirus. So it got a time when we need to pay our tuition. And <laughs> my, uh, my parents had nothing to do because uh, that coronavirus really affects our economy here in Nigeria. So and the school has been the stopping horse that if we don't pay our tuition, we're not going to write our exam. So when I was panicked about that, what am I going to do? I have no one to call except my parents. And my parents have nothing to do. Even though my mother was crying about that, how are we going to do, do it? Is my son going to drop out from the school? Because I I happen to be the only one who have a, a degree certificate. So it was as she was crying, and I also was wondering that what am I going to do now? No one to call, said my friend. But the uh, the school told everyone to go for a week uh, holiday. So to go and find, uh, to look for money to pay. So 
when all of us went for the uh, for the a week uh, holiday, so I went home, told my parents about that. that okay, we asked the, uh, I mean, they asked us to come to look for money to pay our fees. But uh, something happened which really encouraged. Uh, I see many things that happen, especially financially. I believe God will do it. So before we the I mean the week that a uh, week holiday before we went back, went back to school. So God really surprised me, and someone just uh, called my my dad and arranged for the money. And my dad was given the money, and he gave it by gave it to me, and I paid the school. So that is the and that is another thing that they give me fear because I look around. Who is going to help us with this uh, tuition? Because it's not something that we can just uh, uh, contribute within ourselves. My brothers and sisters, they are not financially okay. So who else am I going to call on to? But God did it. So that is another experience that I want to share. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Both of you are are actually extremely poor. So the World Bank, um, I only know this because I've looked it up. The World Bank considers Nigeria and Pakistan to be extreme poverty, and both of you yeah. have have lived in poverty. We we, sorry, we only live in Christ Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is. All of you, both of you have these stories. Anything you have today, anything that has happened is not generally because you've had money. It's because God somehow has intervened and given you money. And so you just told the story about your parents that they sacrificed everything. And if yeah. it comes down to the last payment and, and they don't have any money left, um, then everything in a sense is... Uh, is for nothing, right? You you can't graduate. And even in your situation, if you had that final help, somebody helped you that wasn't expected to give you, um, you know, your tuition. I know your story. You got to the very tail end and you still could not graduate without more money. And somebody had to give you that. So your both of your lives, Nasser could tell us the same kinds of stuff. Both of your lives are just one step of faith after another with God providing for you. So Nasser, let's go back to what scripture do you have that you look to when you uh, are facing fear or dealing with this topic of faith? Yeah, uh, in most of my fears, I used to read uh, Psalm 23. And uh, also, I read uh, Psalm 121. So, uh, would you like me to read? Uh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I like nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest I think the network is not good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're seeing his lips move. This is not an uh, unusual situation when you're dealing with internet I, in the, in and I will dwell in the house of the lord forever very good thank you um okay so i'm going to share my screen then we're going to pray okay so um let's look at this we'll share my screen here
So this uh, meme helped me to think about some things. And you can, you know, bitterness is the opposite of forgiveness. Control is the opposite of submission. Doubt is the opposite of hope. Fear, that's what we're talking about today, is the opposite of faith. And worry is the opposite of prayer. So my verse is Hebrews 11.6, which deals with faith, right? So we have verses in the Bible, quite a few, where we're told not to fear. And we certainly have lots of verses about faith, but this one is the classic one. It is impossible to please God without faith. For those who come to God must believe that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. I don't think I said that exactly right, but that's close enough. All right, so we're going to do one more thing. Uh, I want to look at, we're going to go into Nasser's page here. I don't mean this as any kind of an advertisement, but there's something here I want us to think about. Okay, so this is what brought us together. This is the storm, and it says Wednesday, um, 1 p.m. or whatever it says, 2 p.m., and, of course, this comes on the heels of the terrible storm that just annihilated some of the states um, in America. So I'm not saying that everybody's afraid that the same thing is going to happen. But what I am thinking is that let's pray that this doesn't happen, right? So my tendency would be to pray for safety, pray that, you know, maybe some bad things wouldn't happen. But in reality, what, what I think we need to pray about is, um, I'm going to see if I can stop sharing my screen. I don't know how to do that. Um, so what I want us to pray about is that this would even be prevented. So we were talking before that we could pray for, are we still together? Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. Okay, very good. Sorry, I'm having problems here. So um, what can we do here? I know you're seeing my screen. Ah, here we go. All right. So is there any way to stop it? Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, it's not working. All right. So while we try to do this, um, why don't we begin praying. And let's do this. Nasser, how about if you pray first? And then yep. um, I'll pray and then Sunday you close us out. And we want to pray about this storm. There's more than one storm here. We're thinking about, you know, we have an election in America coming up that even impacts you guys. We have um, threats in the Middle East with war. We have threats, a nuclear version with Ukraine and Russia and NATO. Um, we have financial concerns. We have currency concerns. There's all kinds of things going on. I don't want to pray about all those, but let's pray for the storm and Nasser get us started. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity, bringing us together so that we can discuss our fears together. And Lord, we pray for the storm in Florida. If you protect this state, you might be want on this state. The people who are in fear in that state. Florida, they, they feel peace. They feel so nothing could damage them. Nothing could touch them so they can live their normal life. We know that things can, bad things can happen in our life. But God, you are the... protector you are the savior you love us we deserve we thank you for the for your son lord jesus christ to whom you sent to us and we have internal life in faith in jesus lord jesus christ and with this faith we ask your protection on florida in every situation that the country usa facing should be protected and 
be in your hands so people will feel calm peace we ask this in the mighty name of lord jesus christ amen amen father we have all experienced miracles things that we didn't expect would happen and can only be explained by you and so uh man forgive us for thinking that you're incapable of changing the weather you create the weather give me a break um yeah. jesus calmed the storm the the disciples said who is this man that can do this who can speak to the storm and it is calmed and at least in america we get so used to science and technology and forecasts that we just remove you from the picture and we do not come and boldly ask you to change what's happening. And that's what we're doing. Not because we're some great, um, I don't know, prayer warrior, but because we've been blessed with the blood of Jesus and have been forgiven. And we stand before you asking for a miracle. And maybe that would be that this is simply a tropical storm. Maybe it's on the lower side of, of the hurricane issue. But, um, Lord, we pray that you would demonstrate yourself in this storm in a way that shows that you're in control. And we uh, just pray that you would change what the fearful outcome would be and help it instead to be seen that you intervened and you changed what people thought would happen. And so we do ask for protection for the Floridians. We ask for protection even in their property. Um, but most of all, Lord, we just ask you to calm the storm and to show America that you're still God and very active and you can do these things. And it's only because of Christ that we can ask that. So we ask it in his name. Amen. Amen. Oh, our Father, we appreciate your holiness. We appreciate your faithfulness. Lord, your will is perfect to Jesus. Your word says in the book of Psalms, chapter 121, verse 7 and 6, The Lord will keep you from all evil. You will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and your coming in. From the time on and forever. Lord, according to your work, we pray for Florida. We ask for protection. Lord, will you protect them in the name of Jesus? Father, we pray. You are the one in charge of weather. Lord, we pray the weather cannot work against them in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for your protection, for your guidance. Lord, we pray that you rescue them from any calamity that uh, is on the way. Lord, we pray that you can see it in the name of Jesus. We pray for every life living in Florida. We pray for every property in Sorry, none of them will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Father, we say that you, we believe that you have the power to say, and no one can say no. And you, if you said no, no one can say it. Father, and your word made us to understand that if we are according to your will, you will do it. Lord, you are asking for the people in Florida, Lord, we pray that may your protection never go away from them in the name of Jesus. Father, if it is sin, I will bring wrath to them. We say that you forgive them and have mercy on them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. God bless. Have a great week. We'll Thank see you. what happens on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. Yeah.
Love Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. God bless you. Thanks.